this is uh, introductory nuclear physics course and uh, today we are going to discuss uh, fission uh, reactors and uh, it's uh, part one it's a three lectures uh, series on fission reactors uh, that we are going to uh, talk in detail and i am dr nasir majid mirza the fission reactors uh, as you can uh, see around the world are producing electricity uh, as a byproduct of the fission uh, reaction uh, and uh, this is one uh, example uh, in which the large cooling towers are uh, seen uh, emitting uh, the, the exhaust uh, steam uh, which is uh, going out and the small reactor buildings uh, in this uh, region are in are really the uh, reactor buildings where the nuclear reactor is placed let's uh, start our discussion with the fission which is based on uranium so fission is uh, basically the uh, reaction in which large energy is produced and uh, that uh, energy comes as a result of the uh, process of uh, splitting the uranium uh, nucleus into uh, two uh, fission fragments and uh, two or three neutrons that come out uh, upon the absorption of a uh, thermal uh, or a low energy neutron uh, this happens the uranium nucleus uh, basically gets uh, uh, split into two fission fragments and the binding in energy or the energy change is, uh, is released about 210 million uh, electron volt energy is uh, released in uh, one reaction. So if there are many reactions that are taking place, uh, then uh, this uh, energy is uh, very large. The neutrons that uh, really are the byproduct uh, are the fast neutrons that come out of the uh, fission uh, reaction. And these neutrons then uh, continue the chain uh, by getting a slowed down and absorbed into uh, another uranium. And the process continues. The energy produced by Fusion is also a, a another uh, large energy producing uh, reaction. And the fusion is a process in which the uh, lighter elements like hydrogen atoms uh, combine to produce uh, a, a massive, uh, for example, helium atom. And in this process also, we get the energy uh, emitted and uh, Per reaction, this energy is in, of the order of million electron volt, and therefore the fusion is another uh, possible uh, reaction in which the large energy can be produced and then can be used. The systems uh, of uh, of uranium uh, and uh, um, and a source of neutron then can play a role that neutrons can get multiplied from one neutron. You can have two neutrons or three neutrons per fission. And then this uh, can uh, keep on escalating uh, with the passage of time. And uh, the, the effective uh, neutron multiplication factor can be found. The effective neutron multiplication factor is basically the ratio uh, of uh, a number of neutrons that are produced by fission in one generation, and uh, uh, it is compared with the total number of neutrons that are produced by fission in the previous uh, generation. And the ratio gives us the multiplication, how much uh, is multiplication taking place. 
the k effective is the notation used for this purpose and uh, k is the multiplication factor and e double f effective stands for the effective neutron multiplication it is the number of neutrons produced in one generation divided by the number of neutrons produced in preceding generation and if this k effective is less than um, one then we say that the system uh, cannot sustain the chain reaction because uh, the next generation neutron produced become less than one and therefore this reaction will start uh, dying down over the time. Such a system in which this happens is termed as a, a subcritical system. And if uh, the multiplication factor is equal to one, it is just critical system. So, so every fission is causing here average one uh, more uh, fission, which leads to the continuation of fission. Uh, uh, more and more fissions will take place and it, the process can go on happening. Here, uh, the reaction is sustained and such a system is called critical system. So a subcritical system can be made eventually to a critical system and uh, the supercritical is a system in which the multiplication factor is larger than one. Uh, the result is that the number of fission reactions uh, keep on increasing and they increase exponentially, uh, leading to the explosion of fission uh, reaction. The multiplication is huge after a certain amount of time. So it is uh, a system which uh, is uh, eventually uncontrolled system. So a supercritical is the term used for such systems. Uh, one can have a subcritical system which can be converted into the critical system and then eventually made uh, supercritical. The question is how to develop a controlled critical system uh, which will keep on producing the electricity. So today's uh, talk is more focused uh, to uh, the generation of electricity from uh, nuclear um, power plant, which is uh, capable of uh, fission reactions and which can uh, be made subcritical, which can be converted into a just critical, which can be made slightly supercritical and then controlled. So that's the target of our uh, today's discussion. A controlled uh, nuclear reactor system is uh, a, such a system in which the uh, multiplication factor can be uh, equal to one or could be increased uh, slightly larger than one. The reactors are in general used for generation of electricity. Uh, they can uh, be employed for the aircraft carriers, uh, energy systems, submarines, energy systems. They can also produce uh, medical uh, isotopes for imaging and uh, cancer treatment. And uh, they can also be used for the conduction of uh, research. So there are two uh, main branches or streams for designing uh, a controlled fission uh, system. Uh, one type is the research reactor and the other is the power reactor. Research reactors are those reactors that are operated uh, in universities or institutions of research uh, in many countries. These reactors generate neutrons uh, to, to um, uh, produce uh, radio pharmaceutical uh, uh, or the isotopes for uh, for therapy or uh, for uh, medical purposes they can be producing the radio isotopes for testing materials and they are are capable of, of uh, helping in conduction of uh, basic research in physics chemistry uh, material science biology so a broader uh, facility around a research reactor it can be can be developed in nuclear power plant or a nuclear power reactor is a, a uh, is a plant which produces 
the thermal energy from fission reactions and converts uh, that thermal energy into a mechanical energy. And then that mechanical energy is ultimately converted into electrical energy and uh, we have the electricity. How uh, the nuclear fission energy evolved and how we started uh, doing this uh, uh, conversion. First, we know this uh, that uh, Strassmann and uh, Otto Hahn discovered uh, unstable uranium and its, uh, its properties. So then efforts were done to convert uh, this into a, a, a uncontrolled uh, material that can be used in, in war. And Second World War saw that uh, such uh, materials were used as bombs. In February 1939, Neil Bohr discovered the properties of U-235 and U-238 separately. Earlier 1941 uh, showed that uh, USA's uh, scientists started working on possibility of uh, making a nuclear weapon and uh, the work uh, was declared as the Manhattan Project. Later, uh, United States entered Second World War and uh, the Manhattan Project initiation led to build a nuclear weapon uh, to help United States uh, of America in Second World War. The largest uh, technical program in the world uh, in a series of, uh, of uh, groups uh, happened at that time. The technical infrastructure was also developed for nuclear power plants side by side. Uh, in December uh, 2nd, uh, 1942, world's first controlled nuclear chain reaction uh, happened. A group of physicists uh, worked under Enrico Fermi uh, at the University of Chicago and uh, developed uh, the controlled nuclear chain uh, system. Then second phase of Manhattan Project was uh, to enrich uh, the natural uranium. Natural uranium contains a very low concentration of U-235 and it was a plan to enrich or increase the concentration of uranium um, isotope U-235 um, and it was done. Enrichment plant uh, called Oak Ridge uh, Complex uh, or Oak Ridge Laboratories near uh, my city was built and uh, many uh, workers participated. Then three nuclear weapons were manufactured and exploded in uh, 1945. We will, uh, in uh, today's talk, we'll discuss the fission uh, reaction-based uh, nuclear power plants. The fuel for such reactors is uranium, uh, as shown here, uh, and plutonium, uh, shown here. To run nuclear reactors, it is uh, very important that uh, we have the nuclear fuel, which is really the uh, uh, uranium uh, having concentrations of U-235 and then U-238. Natural uranium contains about 0.7%. 0.7% uh, U-235 and uh, the 90 9.3% is uh, the U-238. Uranium is the uh, most commonly used element in uh, the nuclear fuel, although plutonium and thorium are also possible fuels. And the mixed uh, uh, fuel uh, in which uh, uranium and plutonium both are there uh, are also being employed. Fuel is basically manufactured into small fuel pellets and it is packed into fuel rods. And uh, uh, the, these uh, rods are really surrounded by zirconium cladding to avoid uh, any leakage. Um, 
some uh, uh, places have uh, stainless steel uh, uh, as a cladding material. Some uh, parts have uh, aluminum as a cladding as well. So these fuel rods can further be assembled into a fuel bundle in which many rods are uh, combined together to form a bundle. Uh, and uh, it depends upon the need. Uh, fissionable fuel uh, is uh, basically the uh, fuel which is uh, uranium for uh, low energy neutrons. And uh, in a nuclear uh, power plant, uranium-235 concentration is increased to 3% or more. It is generally 3% to 5%. Um, depending upon the geometry and uh, the reactor type that uranium is enriched. Then fuel pellets are formed and you can see that uh, the fuel pellet can be compared with um, the dime and uh, we can see it's a, it's a few centimeters size. The Uranium is mined from the ore and it contains uh, about 99% uh, U-238 and less than 1% U-235, then it is enriched and converted. One pellet of uh, uranium uh, is uh, capable of producing uh, uh, energy which is equivalent uh, of uh, 17,000 feet of natural gas. Uh, about uh, 2,000 pounds of coal and 150 gallons of oil. So very small uh, amount of uranium uh, can, uh, can uh, replace uh, these uh, types of fuel. Uranium uh, pellets are stacked and it's about uh, 12 feet uh, long uh, fuel rods, a very long uh, fuel rods, uh, about 200 fuel rods uh, are joined together to form a fuel rod assembly and many fuel rod assemblies do form a core. So if you look at uh, the fuel pallet uh, size and uh, compare them, you, you will find the uh, fuel pallet uh, few centimeter dia and uh, then uh, having uranium uh, and uh, U-235, uh, which has more fission cross-section as compared to U-238 for thermal neutrons. So high uh, possibility is that uh, thermal neutrons can be absorbed by U-235 more and then can cause fission and uh, uh, the U-238 has a high cross-section for fast neutrons, but not that high uh, what we see in uh, U-235. So uranium mining is uh, done uh, through ores and then it is processed into tiny fuel pellets and um, usually it is a conversion process uh, which is done and uranium dioxide pellets are formed. Metallic uranium is uh, rarely used. Then uh, they are put into fuel rods and fuel rods are really converted. Uh, and uh, um, they are, they, they, there is a fine cladding around the fuel uh, rods and that is generally zirconium, uh, zircholi, or uh, the stainless steel or al aluminum. So if you uh, look at uh, the combination, the fuel uh, pellets are really stacked inside one, uh, this kind of a fuel rod, uh, and this uh, these fuel rods are stacked together to form a long, uh, about 12 feet long uh, fuel rod. These fuel rods are joined together and uh, they are uh, bundled uh, together uh, to form one uh, fuel uh, bundle. The pellets uh, in the long metal tubes can buckle. Therefore, there is uh, uh, provision of joining and uh, sealing the uh, um, around the uh, fuel bundle and uh, then then keeping intact the whole thing. Fuel rods are uh, made of uh, 
uh, zirconium cladding that is corrosion resistant and fuel rods are arranged into fuel assembly and there is a way to uh, handle the fuel rod bundle. Then these bundles are uh, really placed inside the reactor and after they are exposure to neutrons for a certain amount of time, uh, they are removed uh, and uh, then they they contain basically the fission fragments and the fission fragments also decay and they are radioactive elements. So therefore, this kind of a bundle becomes a very uh, hot, uh, I mean to say they become radioactive and their effect is very high and therefore they are placed inside a uh, uh, large uh, water pool and uh, they are cooled for a certain amount of time and then they are uh, given a chance for the uh, final destination uh, where these fuel uh, bundles are uh, placed uh, for uh, life. A nuclear fission uh, reactor core top view uh, one of the system I'm showing here, and it is from the World uh, Nuclear Organization that uh, have a library of uh, telling us about the nuclear power plants. Uh, this uh, uh, is uh, uh, at the moment totally immersed in water, and you can see the open head of the of the top head of the of the uh, pressure uh, vessel open and uh, inside there is a grid. Each grid uh, square has that bundle lowered into it and uh, and uh, the, the machine is capable of pulling the bundle out of it and then placing it somewhere else in the waste pool or replacing the bundle. Um, the configuration is available, each bundle is numbered and the operation can be done uh, from a bridge. Uranium enrichment requires uh, certain machines uh, that are based on principle of uh, rotating uh, centrifuges. And here we show these uh, uh, centrifuge-based uh, uh, plants where a uh, very large number of uh, these centrifuges are, are connected together in cascades and they are placed uh, and uh, here the enrichment is done. Enrichment stands for the uh, process where uranium, uh, natural uranium, uh, having a, a very small concentration of U-235 is converted into a little bit uh, higher enrichment and increase in enrichment is from 3 to 5%. So 3 to 4 or 5% uh, fuel uh, enrichment is done and the process is uh, uh, employs uh, natural uranium and the cent centrifuges consume large amount of energy. The reactor core is uh, what we have seen already the, from the top view that is uh, based on the fuel rods. Um, uh, they are, there are bundles and the bundles also contain control rods. Uh, the control rods contain boron 10 and cadmium and uh, indium and they absorb the thermal neutrons to very um, high efficiency. And uh, the probability of absorption, the cross-section, absorption cross-section for boron is, is uh, very large uh, as compared to the um, uh, absorption in uh, U-235 or U-238. So they, these move rods can move in and out of the core and uh, they give the control. And if you are, if you lower the control rods within the core, almost all the neutrons are absorbed by the rods. And there is all there, there is a still uh, supply of the heat, which is uh, removed uh, even after the shutdown. Nuclear reactor can be shut down fully by inserting control rods, and there are chemicals where, where the um, the boric acid is. Uh, enriched in boron 10 is uh, mixed uh, uh, with pure water and then it is allowed to pass through the nuclear reactor core and then it also helps to stop the uh, absorption of uh, neutrons in, into 
fissionable material and uh, it uh, starts getting the uh, very high absorption rates in uh, boron. There are steel cases of uh, the fuel rods and the control rods and uh, the coolant is uh, always pumped through the core for heat uh, transfer and the whole process is housed in a um, containment building that we are going to talk. Remember that all nuclear reactors uh, that are really uh, uh, capable of producing fission uh, process. So when fission happens, the beta decay occurs and uh, beta decay is also uh, where the electrons or the charged particles are, are produced and the deacceleration of charged particles generates Cherenkov radiation. The Cherenkov radiations uh, uh, have a very, very nice uh, blue glow. Uh, and in research reactors, this is really visible. And uh, uh, since uh, research reactors have a very large uh, pool of water, uh, the, these uh, uh, Cherenkov radiations can be seen uh, when a nuclear reactor is glowing uh, with the fission uh, process. When fission stops, the beta decay also stops uh, because beta emission stops and then uh, or lowers and therefore this glow uh, decreases to very, very uh, small values and uh, it is not this much uh, <clears throat> enlightening. If we look at uh, a nuclear power plant and we try to answer uh, how uh, energy is produced in a uh, nuclear power plant. And then I have this schematics from uh, the World Nuclear Organization, and it has an information library and where the uh, these uh, presentations are there. And I have taken one uh, slide uh, to uh, elaborate this. Uh, first of all, let's go inside this uh, thing, which is called red nuclear reactor pressure vessel. Inside the pressure vessel, these are the uh, fuel bundles and also the control rods. We have not shown here the control rods, but the fuel bundles are there. When fission happens, the energy is released and it is given to the coolant water. Primary coolant is water. For light water reactors, the primary coolant is water and the water uh, under the pressure is kept in the liquid state. It is not allowed to get converted into the steam. Within this uh, pressure vessel and the, the whole loop, it remains water. However, it is super uh, heated water and uh, super saturated water. It goes uh, with this energy of uh, uh, fission reaction, it takes the energy and then goes to this uh, um, primary coolant uh, circuit and it changes, uh, it exchanges the energy with this uh, heat exchanger. In this heat exchanger, the energy is given and steam is produced within the heat exchanger and this uh, steam becomes uh, the supersaturated steam which goes to to generate um, the uh, ro rotation in turbine and uh, turbine starts rotating so it is converted so steam starts the thermal energy starts converting this energy into mechanical energy where it is rotating the turbine blades turbine moves and it generates electricity and so there is a generator to generate electricity and that electricity is uh, given away. The steam is, uh, uh, after giving the energy, comes out and it is uh, uh, still under the uh, sub-atmospheric uh, pressure and it goes to another condenser. In this condenser, the condensation takes place and the steam is converted into the water. So the condensed water is uh, then under pressure uh, pumped uh, through this uh, primary pump um, and it goes back. The cooling tower is uh, associated with this uh, condenser and uh, there is a loop of, uh, of uh, coolant uh, water which uh, goes through the cooling tower and comes back. And in, within the cooling water, uh, the uh, 
the extra heat is allowed to to go out and therefore you see the white uh, smoke like thing coming out of the cooling tower the cooling tower here shown in very small structure is actually the largest possible structure in the nuclear uh, reactor complex this dome and the building is uh, is a relatively a small building as compared to the cooling tower. We will see subsequently these uh, details. Uh, let's uh, move further and look at the pressure vessel. As I have already uh, shown you, the nuclear reactor, the core is placed inside this kind of a, of a pressure vessel. The pressure vessel is generally employed to contain the core. The core contains the bundles the fuel bundles, the control rod, and the mechanism for holding is at this head, head of this. Uh, and there are the inlets and the outlets, inlets and the outlets available. And the, uh, such systems are uh, usually four at the most uh, four systems available for uh, the uh, heated water to go out and then come back as a, as a uh, cold water so hot leg and cold cold leg is available and uh, this whole thing is uh, is allowed to 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 be placed uh, in in a, in a structure uh, where this settles and uh, overall this uh, uh, thing is covered with a with a dome like structure where where the integrity of the of the dome ensures that uh, the uh, nuclear reactor building is safe. Uh, as I have already mentioned, there are, there are four possible uh, loops that are made available with the with the pressure vessel. Here is the pressure vessel, and at the top you see the control banks, and you see one, two, three, and four steam generators that are connected to the to the hot leg and uh, the cold. Uh, leg contains the coolant uh, pump. The coolant pump, uh, the primary pump is, is attached to it and the rest of the systems are there. There is one uh, additional thing termed as pressurizer and we are going to show that this is a basically safety of the system. Remember that the pressure vessel uh, keeps uh, the uh, high temperature uh, water uh, in uh, in a liquid form, so high pressure is uh, is introduced inside this this uh, reactor vessel, and uh, it keeps uh, the state of the of the uh, coolant as uh, liquid. A typical steam generator is a very large structure, and you can see here about uh, fifty tires uh, uh, large. Uh, trailer truck uh, is used to to transport such a steam generator inside this uh, uh, steam generator it is a very very complex mechanical engineering design where the inlet and the outlets are provided and he the uh, hot water enters into it and gets converted uh, the the other part gets converted into steam and steam leaves the system This is a, a design of a pressure uh, pressurizer and uh, pressurizers are employed for the safety purposes. Uh, they have uh, these two regions. One is the vapor region uh, in which the water uh, droplets are present or the, the um, steam is present and the other is basically the water region. The balance of the water in this region keeps the pressure of the pressure vessel. If water content is large, uh, and the water uh, makes the uh, vapor region small, then uh, and there is a need for uh, uh, heaters to start working and heater will generate the heat and then will make uh, some of the water converted into vapor region and therefore again a balance will be achieved. Uh, if uh, there is more uh, vapor state or a vapor region is increased as beyond certain level, then there is a spray line which will start throwing uh, water into the system and that will 
uh, will start getting the vapors uh, conversion into vapor and will start again the balance. The surge line or the connection will be such that the, the, the whole thing is a basically safety. If anything goes wrong, uh, the, the pressure build up to a very large value, then there is a no nozzle available uh, with the spray line and uh, it, it will act as a safety valve and it will get open. The uh, nozzle is called the relief nozzle. So spray nozzles and relief nozzles are there and the rest of the heaters support systems are there and it is one of one of the uh, very important in inherently safe uh, nuclear power plant system which ensures uh, kind of a control uh, towards the heat transfer steam turbine inside looks like this uh, it is very large structure again and uh, if you Go into the details of these uh, these uh, uh, wheels uh, or the objects like wheels. <clears throat> if you look closely, these wheels are really containing these fins, and all these fins are placed at the angle, and uh, uh, they are really responsible for the steam uh, um, which uh, hits and uh, makes uh, them. Uh, and the, the uh, turbine to to um, convert the steam energy into the uh, rotational energy and that rotational energy uh, or the mechanical energy is eventually used to uh, generate electricity. As I already told you that there are cooling towers uh, that are out uh, side uh, uh, with the secondary system, the cooling system of the nuclear power plant. They are the largest possible available structures. And uh, from these structures, the, the steam, the secondary cooling uh, steam uh, gets out and uh, the temperature is maintained. The dome and the nuclear reactor building and the stack from which the affluents can be allowed to go outside, these are very small as compared to these two structures. And it is really remarkable to see the cooling tower designs um, that are based on the forced uh, heat transfer and, uh, and uh, the convective, uh, free convective heat transfer only where wind uh, energy uh, or the, the uh, atmospheric energy is employed. Uh, a nuclear reactor is a remarkable machine which produces electricity after converting many processes and simplifies many processes. We will stop uh, this uh, discussion here and uh, in our next lecture we'll talk more about the nuclear power reactors and their components and their details and the types and uh, we will try to elaborate uh, with the examples. Thank you so much.